The Palas are the most incredible group of religious men I have ever met. They're so welcoming to everyone. They are open-minded and they're inclusive and they're engaging. Palas, they are, they are really friendly. Caring for the person and meeting people where they're at. Their mission of inclusion is not just in the words from the pulpit, but also in their actions in leading the community. When you come to church a little bit early before my start, you will see all of them cascading down from the altar, just going different way, greeting parishioners. They want to know you. They want to do anything they can for you. I have never really been friends with priests before the Paulist Fathers, and here I feel like I'm welcome to be myself. As a younger person moving to a new city, the Paulist Fathers have taken a lot of really great care of the community. We are really lucky to have the Paulist here and have that strong community and openness to all sorts of different people. Every single Mass during the, the Eucharist, we are, are kind of in awe at the diversity of, of who comes here. You know, every walks of life, all the different cultures. I'm one of the African refugee community here in this parish, and I love it so much. Yo les doy las gracias a todos los padres. Todos los lo queremos mucho como que fueran hermanos. The Paulist Fathers have been super helpful in joining all of our young adult events and helping to facilitate them specifically. The UCC, the Catholic Center here, it just gives me, I guess, a great platform to meet other people who believe the same things that I do, and the people here have become my closest friends. Sometimes we'll have study sessions here at the UCC up in the third floor, motivate each other, so it's really helped me both academically and then spiritually as well, just to have those conversations. We build each other up as a community, so when they're strengthened in their faith, like I'm strengthened in mine. The Paulist Fathers really cater to the students so they're quite involved within the student body, which is something that's definitely different from other groups of priests. They're really like down to like talk to students, to talk to people, not just like through spiritual direction, but just like to have like a normal conversation. I've worked in four different churches and I've been most happy here because they welcome everybody that comes in. The concentration of the Paulists on preaching and evangelization has uh, deepened my faith through their powerful preaching of the gospel. I learn something every time I listen to a homily here. So much detail and effort goes into preparing even the smallest ceremony. It breaks the word of God for us. We always get something that's enriching. There was always lovely flowers. There's always music, beautiful music. With a great diversity of personalities among them, and yet they have that one spirit of breaking the word open in scripture, as well as then challenging the people of the parish to put it into action in our lives. One of the lessons that I've taken from the Paulists is the action of saying yes when you are invited or asked to um, serve in a ministry. The Paulist Fathers have taught me specifically that the word Catholic means much more than what's written down in books and a lot more about action and being a true member of an engaged community. St. Paul, he didn't just go around preaching all by himself. He often encountered and worked with local collaborators. And I see the, the Paulists continuing in this mission of helping involve lay people in the life of the parish. I have found that in many years of working and leading the ministry of the Clothing Outreach Center, they are absolutely wonderful support. They're very giving, they're very open, they're very forgiving when we need help. Their concern for bringing our parish together, bridging different divides and challenges. It is a really safe space where people can be honest and open and question in real ways and talk about how the scripture directly applies to their life. Everyone should have what they need and whatever it takes to support that, they're willing to do. They really, really are advocating for the poor and the marginalized and for those on the fringes of society. To me, that's what the gospel is all about. We are part of a community that reaches out with a personal touch, not just through funds. They truly live their charisms of what they believe in. No one is excluded. If you want to be fed, come to us. And I think that's what it's all about.
The skyline of Austin has uh, changed a whole lot since I was here for my college days. Austin is one of the fastest growing cities in the country. And uh, uh, with that, um, you know, every day there's, there's new buildings, new streets, new detours. So it's a somewhat difficult city to navigate, but it's also exciting because there's so many more people moving here. When I was here first as a student, you know, I was here with a specific purpose to uh, do my studies. Now, having been through undergrad, having worked a few years in the professional world, and then also my uh, time in formation with the Paulists, I have a much, much bigger perspective on life around the country. And I think my experience as a Paulist has really helped me um, realize what does it take to uh, form a new community? What does it take to find people that you can relate to, find people that you can share your faith with? And also, how does uh, Christ journey with us as we grow? The St. Austin's community, I think, really lives out the gospel values with such integrity and with such passion, such conviction. One of our uh, biggest strengths is our outreach ministries, our help to those in need. I saw that up close when I came in as, a, as the associate pastor during the, the pandemic. The needs were tremendous, but also the community really stepped up. They really found in our people and in our volunteers a uh, compassionate voice. The Paulists have really been on the forefront of uh, adapting our ministry to help people uh, continue to stay connected to the church, uh, even when for reasons of health, uh, they have to stay at home or they have to stay distance from one another. I think that's been a tremendous blessing and I think that um, that step certainly gonna continue long-term. At the same time, I, I think that people also recognize that uh, online mass is just not the same as it is in person. Uh, especially our sacramental theology, our understanding of, of who we are as, as people, people that need connection, people that need relationship, people that need communion. Uh, there's always going to be a need uh, for people to gather with one another in person as well. One of the big draws of Austin is that it has a lot of uh, wonderful scenery. And on my days off, I love to come here and run around with Town Lake or Lake Ladybird, as you can see. I love running because it's a familiar activity, it's a contemplative activity, it just allows me to um, kind of take out all the stress that I have uh, on the trail, you know, through a good workout. You know, quite often I need some time just to, to pray and process and, and think about, uh, you know, the events and when I do promise that, that I'd hold people in prayer, I, I really do that. So. A lot of my life is also spent not just looking ahead, but also looking back and just praying with and praying about um, those who are suffering, those who have come to me for help, trying to, you know, listen for where God might be present in those moments and um, hopefully be ready to, to share that spirit with people in the future. I was ordained in July of 2020, so I'm still a relatively young priest and at St. Austin's, I have the, the privilege of doing ministry throughout the life cycle. I think it's a great uh, church to start at as a young priest because I get to see um, all different aspects of people's lives. So straight ahead, you'll see the tower. That's the main administrative building of the University of Texas where I spent four and a half uh, happy years when I was studying uh, mechanical engineering and liberal arts. It's also where I came to know the Paulus through their ministry right next door to UT. So. I made so many really good friends while I was here. It was it was just such an adventure of learning. Uh, it's interesting now because I take this same route, uh, not to go to the engineering campus, but rather to continue onward to St. David's Hospital. So right now at the parish, we serve two different hospitals that are within our parish uh, community. Welcome to our uh, temporary home. We're leasing this house for the next few years while we wait for our uh, construction project to finish. So. It served us well so far, and uh, we actually have many parishioners who happen to live on this block, so come on in. So welcome to our temporary residence that we're uh, in. Uh, we kind of have this great room, this living room, dining room, uh, kitchen combination here. So this is where we spend a lot of our community time. Uh, we make it a, a point to have dinner with each other uh, almost every night. Uh, and especially uh, a nice lunch on Sundays as well. So uh, this is where we continue our community time. We also make it a point to pray evening prayer every night together as well. So here in my bedroom, I have a, a few items from Colombia to remind me of uh, where my father came from and where my grandmother and uh, many aunts, uncles and cousins still live. 
So uh, I get this a lot. My, my name's 100% Italian. It's Paolo Leonardo Puccini, but my father was born and raised in Colombia. So he came from a, a family that was Italian. His mother, my, my grandmother, was born and raised in Milan. Uh, his father was born and raised in Colombia, but from uh, an Italian family as well. So I love uh, both aspects of the culture. I love how warm and uh, friendly the people are in Colombia. Uh, they're always uh, full of joy, full of celebrating all of life's uh, special moments. And I've also been able to stay connected with my family in Italy, my, uh, my uh, relatives from my grandmother's side who still live in Milan. And I love a good coffee, which I think is, uh, is a wonderful mix of both cultures too, especially a, a really strong espresso. For my ordination, people were uh, quite generous with gifts. Um, probably, you know, like they would be for a wedding or a major life milestone like that. So I splurged and I bought a, a coffee grinder and an espresso maker. So for me, it's one of life's uh, simple joys. It's something I enjoy every day. And it's just a great reminder of um, the good gifts of life uh, through coffee and also the generosity of the community. Good evening, and welcome to the 2024 Spirit of Hacker Awards. My name is Paul's father, Dave Dwyer. I'm the first consultor of the Paul's Fathers and the host of the Busted Halo show on Sirius XM's The Catholic Channel. And tonight, we will honor those exemplary people who accompany us Paulists in mission and who embody the spirit of the founder of the Paulist Fathers, servant of God, Father Isaac Thomas Hecker. The theme of this year's program is Advancing God's Mission, through our charism and community. Over the next hour, you'll hear Paulus from our parishes, centers, and ministries where we serve explain how their awardees are inspired by the Paulist charism to discern the movement of the Holy Spirit within themselves, but also build up their local communities, the greater Paulist family, and indeed the universal church. So without any further delay, let's get to it. This is why you're here, to see the awards and to cheer on these great people. We'll kick it off with this year's 2024 President's Award. And for that, of course, I must introduce you to our Paulus President, Father Rene Constanza. Servant of God, Father Isaac Hecker once said, It is no small task to bring all our thoughts, affections, actions and expressions in accordance with the dictates of the Holy Ghost. How few know what it means to give oneself wholly and unreservedly to God and persist unto that end without restraining anything of this gift. Father Hecker's words are embodied by the recipients of this year's Precedence Award, the Oblate Sisters of Jesus the Priest, who are celebrating this year their 100th anniversary of their founding. Our Paulus story with the Oblate Sisters began on September 22nd of 1952 when six sisters arrived from Mexico to serve at our junior seminary in Baltimore, Maryland. Later, on September 8th of 1968, the Oblate Sisters moved to their new convent at the Paulus Mother House in New York City. The Oblate Sisters have been faithful partners in our Paulus mission. They continue being a beacon of the light of Christ for us Paulists in the way they live their spirituality and charism without many words, how they practice their faith with devotion, and how they consecrate their daily lives in humble service and generosity. Their charism is to love the priesthood of Christ and to make Christ known and loved. This is visible and palpable to us Paulists who have been blessed by countless prayers and dedicated service 
offered by so many Oblate sisters throughout your 72 years with us. The Paulist Fathers are honored and pleased to recognize the Oblate Sisters of Jesus the Priest as recipients of the Precedence Award at this year's Spirit of Hacker Awards celebration. We are very grateful to God for our celebration of 100 years in the Church, and we are very grateful to the Paulist Fathers for giving us this award, Precedence Award Hackers. So thank you very much, and we are thank thankful to God because we have been celebrating, living out our mission with them for over uh, 70 years in this community. Um, our mission is to pray for vocations and support their mission with our prayers and God's ministry that has been entrusted to them in this community. So very grateful. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias, hermanas. Thank you for your decades of service to the church in North America. Okay, now let's get to you out there in our local Paulist communities and ministries and hear how so many of you embody the spirit of our founder as we continue with the 2024 Spirit of Hecker Awards. I'm happy to announce the recipient of the Spirit of Hecker Award here at St. Paul's in Los Angeles, Claire Henning, for all her work. Also just a, a minister in di many different ways, but most recently, and I think most in a really exciting way, culminating in the work on the Synod. Her and her team put together a report that, uh, that the Vatican actually put on their website. So it's, it's, a, it's a great report. We're sharing our hearts. We're sharing our faith with one another. I just concluded celebrating Mass uh, for the Solemnity of St. Joseph with our school, and I always think of St. Joseph as a uh, patron saint of discernment. He listens to his dreams, he listens to God, and all without ever speaking, just listening to follow the Holy Spirit. And that's certainly the work in ministry that Claire Henning has done here at St. Paul's. The spirit of Hecker is alive in her discernment and her leadership in the Synod, which is calling the whole church to listen. Congratulations, Claire Henning. The recipients this year for the Spirit of Hecker Award for St. John the 23rd are Jerry and Charlie Mulligan uh, for their great work in our social concerns group, helping run it and set it up, but also especially for the many ways they're doing outreach, including to migrants, uh, including to people are homebound, uh, and especially also to our refugee families. It's a special privilege for us to be part of John the 23rd Parish Paulus Parish that gives us the opportunity to practice the corporal works of mercy. Especially visiting the sick like at Serene Manor or visiting in the jails in Knox County and also and most especially welcoming the stranger, the refugees and the immigrants in our midst. But it's combined with a social justice ministry in the city of Knoxville as well, Justice Knox. Thank you Paulus. Thank you. We're also pleased to present two students for the Spirit of Hecker Awards, Delaney Klee and Josh Adkins, for their tireless efforts working with our student group as well as coordinating all the wonderful things we do in campus ministry. Um, so I've been able to experience the, uh, the community here at J23 uh, in Vol Catholic for a couple of years now. Um, and the amount of joy it's brought me over these past few years um, has been you know, unexplainable um, and something that I never would have imagined uh, that I would get out. When I first got to the University of Tennessee, I didn't really know what to do or where I belonged. Um, and so by coming around John the 23rd and meeting all of my like, best friends now and the priests, Father Don, Father Rich, and Father Bob, I felt like I had a place to go and a place where I'm loved and seen. There's no better place than this pew in our mother church to tell you about Paula Ryan, our spirit of Hecker honoree. This is Paula's pew not just at the 8 a.m. Mass on Sunday, but also Monday through Saturday at the Daily Mass. Every day we count on seeing her right here. It's clear that Paula's devotion and love of the body of Christ is profound and overflows to our parish community. She served as an RCIA team member, parish council representative, and as a Eucharistic minister. Paula is a true New Yorker with a heart of gold. 
She's quick to tell you what's on her mind, but she is even quicker to offer a kind word to someone who needs it. In recent years, she's slowed down a bit, but she's often found welcoming visitors, looking for her hugs after mass. In addition to her devotion to the parish, she's been a true friend and collaborator to us Paulists. She's assisted missionary father, Jack Collins, and offered counseling as a registered dietitian to the late father, Charlie Brunick. A few days before Christmas in 2016, while Paula was wrapping Christmas presents for our children, her apartment caught on fire. Paula was severely burned and nearly died. When she was finally able to go home, parishioners made sure she wanted for nothing. She has often said how indebted she is to us, but any of us would say that it was the least we could do for the blessing she has been and is to us. So on behalf of the parishioners, staff, and the Paulus here at the Church of St. Paul the Apostle, it is a true honor to name Paula Ryan our recipient of the 2024 Spirit of Hecker Award. Congrats, Paula. We love you. And happy 80th birthday, too. Hi, I'm Father James Deluzio, Director of the Paulist Fathers Office of Ecumenical and Multi-Faith Relations. My designee for the Hecker Award 2024 is Mr. Emre Selleck, Director of Peace Islands, New York. M. Ray and his wife, Sybil, show exemplary witness to these ideals through education and dialogue efforts, collaborating with churches, synagogues, and temples throughout the New York area. This Ramadan, M. Ray and his Peace Island staff sponsored 22 Iftar dinners, engaging faith leaders and our congregants in 22 different places of worship. These meals foster friendships and empower us to share ideas on the ways we collectively may serve our neighbors and witness to our belief in a loving God who enhances our lives. M. Ray is truly a fine fellow, and I am very pleased to add him to this year's Hacker Award designees. Chuck Coleman, pastor at St. Austin Catholic Church and School here in Austin, Texas. And it's my great pleasure to announce the uh, Spirit of Hecker Awardees for our parish and school. And they are Ms. Trish DeLise and Mr. Christopher Kennedy, both of whom have worked tirelessly for years to help us move forward with brand new buildings to do ministry and to educate and they are truly deserving of this award, and we offer them our deepest gratitude and thanks. Uh, Christopher Kennedy, I've been here a little over 40 years. Uh, Trish and I have been involved in almost every position in the uh, church and the school side, and just felt this opportunity uh, was a generational opportunity for our congregation and had these discussions pre-pandemic. So we're really here accepting this award on behalf of all the parishioners and all the school parents who took this journey with us, this bold step of a pilgrimage, that we will be securing St. Austin's for the next hundred plus years. We hope to accomplish with this new building what, what ministry of the future looks like by envisioning what, what a ministry space looks like in the future. So it was kind of our pleasure to help that come to fruition and to invite our parish to come along on our journey. So we hope this new facility, this new ministry center and school provides that opportunity for us to gather in relationships, whether it is pickleball, whether it's walking track, whether it's a religious education opportunities with new technology that's available for so many. We think this will be an opportunity for folks to come back in a different way. This is the most awkward challenge to give a Spirit of Hecker Award when this will be the last time such an award is given here at Newman Hall Holy Spirit Parish. 
Given the policy, we'll be ending a 117-year-old chapter and returning the leadership to the diocese. Now, what makes Newman amazing is how alive and active the ministry is here. Almost every day and night, something is going on. Bible studies, small faith groups, parties and dances, spiritual direction, rosary or adoration, sacramental prep classes, prayer services. The building would never sleep when we have a 24-hour adoration or a retreat sleepovers. With that intro, I'm proud to announce this year in the final Spirit of Hecker Award at Newman Hall Holy Spirit Parish goes to our amazing and wonderful parishioners. The fire of the Holy Spirit is alive in their endless energy, creativity, and dedication. The unity of the Holy Spirit is alive in our parish as we unite folks from different spectrums of theology, culture, and age. Two other Spirit of Hecker Awards go to this year's student ministry team which was the first full team since the COVID lockdown. They have brought back the energy and creativity of the student ministry team vision that we can pass on to the new leadership at Newman. The third award goes to Randy and Chris Dixon, who have instilled Newman with beauty, elegance, and joy. They filled our Advent worship with the option of six large-sized Advent calendars, each taking a year of their time to design, cut and dye fabrics, and sew together. They also have given us our hand down stations of the cross, a Holy Spirit window in the rectory chapel, and our newest Holy Spirit banner. They help provide beautiful music as choir members and an air of elegance as Newman liturgical dancers. Though we are saddened closing this polished chapter, our 2024 Spirit of Hecker Award winners give us hope. We can confidently close this beautiful polished chapter was hope for Newman Hall's bright and new chapter. May our patrons, the Holy Spirit and St. John Newman, pray for us and for Newman Hall Holy Spirit Parish. The Boston Paulists are proud to present the Spirit of Hecker Award to Mary Skinner. Mary is a salt of the earth Christian Catholic, a lifelong advocate of social justice, an ecumenist, and at heart, a teacher. Mary and the family she raised participated in many civil rights and anti-war protests. She spent a summer at a Catholic worker house and was a founder and board member of the Interfaith Hospitality Network. She earned a PhD in history from Syracuse University and a master's degree in church history, spiritual direction, and feminist theology from the Weston School of Theology. She organized conferences as an oblate at Mount Savior Benedictine Monastery. She has taught classes at a variety of colleges and universities, in addition to being a campus minister at Corning Community College and teaching impoverished students in Kenya. For the past 10 years, Mary has been active in the Paula Center's Immigration Advocacy Group, Racial Justice Advocacy Group, Wednesday Night Supper Club, and Walk for Hunger. Earlier this year, Mary spoke at one of our intergenerational programs about her experiences in the civil rights movement, including her attendance at Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. We are honored to recognize Mary Skinner for her lifelong work in education, interreligious dialogue, and justice. pleasure and honor to announce Barb Foss as the recipient of this year's Spirit of Hecker Award. In her 20 years of ministry as business manager, Barb is an iconic figure on staff at the Cathedral of St. Andrew. With her welcoming spirit and stable presence, she was instrumental in the policy transition from the old Catholic Information Center on Ionia Street to the Cathedral in 2008. Some describe her as a woman of faith, family, and fun. Over the course of her tenure, Barb has accompanied the Cathedral Parish from having a small staff 
with struggling finance and much deferred maintenance to an expansion of qualified professional lay staff that serves the many needs of a strong, vibrant community and the diocese at large. We are grateful for Barb Foss and all she has done. Every uh, spring, the Polis Fathers give an award to someone who carries on the spirit of Father Hector. And we uh, have decided the Columbus Paulus Associates. The Spirit of Hecker Awards, Advancing God's Mission Through Our Charism and Community, is given to Anna C. Berrios Allison for exemplifying in a wonderful way with enthusiasm, joy, and hope the charism of Father Hecker and the Paulus. Today on our birthday. <laughs> I'm delighted to introduce the recipient of the Spirit of Hacker Award this year here at Old St. Mary's Cathedral of China's Mission, Ron Ying. Welcome, Ron. Well, thank you. So, Ron, maybe you can share with us a little bit about your history with the Paulist Fathers and your experience of the Paulist Fathers. Oh, wow. Well, that goes back all the way till I was born. I was baptized up at the mission and first communion, confirmation, and married there. Oh, that, that it all really happened uh, back in the 70s when Father Jim Donovan came out and was, um, he started a college age group and I just kind of tagged along and we started folk masses there and when I was 15 I started playing and masses up there. And then of course the mission migrated into Old St. Mary's at one point and so totally back here at the, at the mother church. Right, right. Yeah, so it feels nice to be back. You know there were a couple of all of us that were pretty significant in your life. Well, I would say Father Joe Donovan had the biggest influence because before I met him, I always thought priests were like these angelly people you're supposed to look out a pedestal. And he was just so down to earth that it's like just changed it. And Bob Pinkston, he gave me my first job and here at Old St. Mary's. So I'm just kind of been at Old St. Mary's all my life. And yeah. Between the Paulists and your family, it's, it's, it's a lifelong connection, so to speak. It has, yeah. Well, again, we're, we're very honored to have you as our recipient this year here at Olson Mary's. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's an honor to get this award. Our Spirit of Hecora Award winner this year is Veronica Labista. Veronica is a Paulist associate who has been instrumental in helping us integrate new associates into the group. Veronica will also be at the Polarization Summit in April. So, Veronica, tell us, why are the Paulist Fathers important to you? Well, first of all, I knew there was a Paulist press, but I didn't know there were priests associated with it, so that was very interesting. But learning about Isaac Hecker, I related very much to his courage in his devoted pursuit of doing God's will. That's the kind of Catholic I want to be. His first biographer wrote that he was joyfully, calmly, totally Catholic, and that was coming from a place of conversion. I also loved his courage against an institution that can sometimes try to squash the voice of the Holy Spirit. And recently, as I was watching St. Mother Cabrini, I saw in her the same kind of courage, the willingness to pray and to listen to God. I enjoy that. I also enjoy the community we have here in Vero. We support one another on our faith walk, and that's critical, too, because you don't grow spiritually in isolation. Yes, you have your quiet moments with God but you need others to walk with you.
the Christian tradition can inspire people to fight for justice, to mitigate the structures of oppression that cause a lot of suffering in our world. We have people that are involved in women gathering together. And again, this is not just Catholic women, but all of the women are invited in this area to be involved in some of our social activities and some of our learning activities. Any Paulist in the last half century who has served at Old St. Mary's in Chicago knows Cleofi Garcia. While many will hail her efforts at hospitality, connecting it with the socials after every Mass, her deeper sense of hospitality actually mingles faith, evangelization, and loving service. Her Filipino background helped her prepare the parish to be the first haven for Filipinos in Chicago. But love takes her beyond that, and the wisdom it inspires exudes from her as she makes everyone who comes here feel at home and encouraged to participate fully. It is with great gratitude we recognize Cleofi Garcia for the 2024 Spirit of Hecker Award. I've been involved in Old St. Mary's for many, many years. When I moved to my current address, I went to Old St. Mary's to request for a blessing in my condo. And Father Weitzel, he told me, this is not enough that you register in writing. You have to be a living member of the Church of All St. Mary's. I intend to do things for as long as I can, as God allows me. Thank you. Mark Mann is the Director of Program and Leadership Institutes at the Catholic Information Center in Grand Rapids. With a deep sense of faith and heart for ministry, Mark's leadership has brought a fresh perspective to the center's mission. Under his guidance, the center has expanded its outreach in fostering spiritual and leadership development. Since taking on his role three years ago, Mark has continued the Paul's tradition of creating a welcoming and inclusive environment for staff and visitors alike. For all these reasons and many more, we are happy to honor Mark Mann as the 2024 Spirit of Hecker Award for the Catholic Information Center in Grand Rapids. What's great about working with the Paulist Fathers is that they really have a posture of dialogue with people, whether they're Catholic or not, that they approach the world with a way of, we have a gospel to proclaim and we want to do it through dialogue with you. Congratulations, Freddie May Poole, for your great contribution to the Landings Ministry in the Washington, Maryland area. We appreciate your dedication and your wonderful presence to all of us in the D.C. area. My most gratitude is when Sunday mornings I see people that have completed landings and they're now in ministries and serving in the church. We feel grateful that uh, we did our part, we helped show them the way, and they did receive it. And that's what makes us grateful. We also honor Father Dominic Robinson from Landings UK. Dominic has been a wonderful support for the continuation of Landings in the UK in Scotland and in various parts of the UK. Dominic's gentle nature, good humor, and forthful sense of social justice has made him a champion of reconciliation ministries in the UK. Congratulations, Father Dominic and Freddie Maypool for being truly returning always. Years ago, the Paulist Father's motto was giving the word a voice. And here at IC, for more than a decade now, that voice has been a soprano. Amanda is the first voice and face we hear and see. Okay. 
Go with the picture. Go with the picture. Thank you, Amanda. Do you want the picture? <laughs> During COVID as well, it is Amanda's face and voice that greeted folks that looked to our live stream. And true story, the plexiglass piece that was here during COVID with the frame on it, there are some kids that actually thought it was an aquarium and that she was singing underwater as another amazing thing. We are so grateful for Amanda Peavy House and we share with you this award today. Thank you so much. amazing opportunity uh, seemingly out of nowhere to join uh, Father Ed in uh, this great journey of encouraging young men to pursue a polis vocation. And I'm very excited to work with the vocation office to hopefully recruit more enthusiastic young men to pursue a priestly vocation. God bless you all and please pray for me as I begin this new journey. One of the great things I appreciate about being a Paulist is their great respect for one's own charisms and gifts. Their willingness to uh, listen in times of trouble and so forth. You could talk with them and know that you were listened to and, and understood and respected. This year, our pastoral staff has selected Ashley Flume as the recipient of the Hecker Award. She's one of our very dedicated students here. She's a member of the choir. She was a student leader for a couple of years and continues to participate in many of our programming here. And we greatly want to say congratulations on you receiving this award. The University Catholic Center here at UCLA has really changed my perspective on my faith, but also my relationship with the Lord. Having the ability to lead others in worship has also been such a blessing. That's something, one of my roles here at the center, and I just couldn't be more grateful for that. We are pleased to select Jacqueline Scott and Diana Verdell for the 2024 Spirit of Hecker Award. Jacqueline and Diana, as pastoral council members, direct their parish benevolence ministry. Over the past several years, they have reframed and reformed our parish-wide giving to better align with our mission, and that is comprised of children, the elderly, social justice, food security, ecumenism, interfaith cooperation, and education. We support the effort to tell the story of the only African-American-led church in our area, including foundational support for the building of a Black History Museum 
and funds for the programs to provide meals for the hungry at uh, serving over 1,000 meals at Thanksgiving. Jacqueline and Diana have led this effort and developed local relationships, noting that all these blessings are only possible due to the generosity of our parishioners. Yes, I can say that the spirit of Hecker is flourishing and thriving at St. Paul the Apostle in Horseshoe Bay. For the 2024 Spirit of Hecker Award, it is our pleasure to nominate Margaret Bissett, a longtime parishioner of both Santa Susana and St. Patrick's. Margaret, her husband, Marco Olivieri, and their two daughters, Flavia and Martina, have been part of our community for over 20 years. Originally from Ireland, Margaret has served as lector and Eucharistic minister and just completed her term as president of our parish council. She has also been the chair of our St. Nicholas Serrata Organizing Committee, of which she has also been a member for many years. Margaret is generous, kind, hardworking, and has a wonderful sense of humor. She will do anything to help. When we made the physical move from Santa Susana to St. Patrick's in 2017, Margaret came with her rubber gloves and cleaning supplies and spent the whole day cleaning, packing up, and transporting the entire contents of our sacristy. She loves the Paulists and is dedicated to our mission here in Rome. And it is with great joy and gratitude that we wish to honor Margaret Bissett with this year's Spirit of Hecker Award. You have to give up more of your time. You have to share your time for organizing these things. And, and it's, it's an effort, but it's just so rewarding in the end. I think what I really like um, about the Polis ministry is the, the wonderful, the welcome, the, the homilies. I really feel I belong here. Wow, that is once again this year an impressive list of Hecker Award honorees. Congratulations, and thank you for your dedication to the Paulist community and your service to the people of God. As we conclude this evening, let's once more hear from the president of the Paulist Fathers, Father Rene Constanza. Thank you for joining us in this evening's Spirit of Hecker Awards. As you can see, all our recipients embody that spirit. Without them and you, our partners in mission, we couldn't make this possible. We keep advancing God's mission through our charism and community. So thank you. May God bless us all. And may God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Father Rene, and thank you for tuning in to the 2024 Spirit of Hecker Awards. Extra special thanks go to all those who had a hand in making this year's program a success, especially Cami Crary in our Office for Mission Advancement, who coordinated all the award presentations and the certificates, and our video editor, Emanuele Sesta. Now, before we sign off, let me express thanks to all those who have donated to this year's Paulist Appeal. The annual Paulist Appeal is our main fundraiser throughout the year, and it enables us to carry out the mission priorities that you saw spotlighted this evening during the Hecker Awards. So to those of you who have given already to the APA this year, thank you for your generosity. We are blessed by your gifts to us. And for those of you who maybe haven't had a chance yet, let me point you to a website. It's www.paulist.org APA. That's annual Paul's appeal. Okay, one more thing I have to tell you about this evening before we sign off, and that is the priesthood ordination of two of our brothers, Chris Lawton and Dan Muckalino. They'll be ordained to the priesthood at St. Paul the Apostle Church in New York, our Paulist Mother Church, on Saturday, May 18th at 10 a.m. by Timothy Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of New York. So please join us. You can join us from anywhere in the world via live stream. You can even follow along with the program booklet at paulist.org slash ordination. Or 
Even better, if it's convenient for you to get to New York, we'd love to have you. It's a big church, plenty of room. St. Paul the Apostle Church, 9th Avenue and 60th Street here in New York City, 10 a.m. on May 18th. Please come and join us in this great celebration, not only for, for two of our own, but really it'll be a great prayer of hope for the future of the Paul's Fathers and for the American church. We hope you can join us then. For now, that's it for this broadcast of the 2024 Spirit of Hecker Awards. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for your support of the Paulist Fathers. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.